is not our place to interfere. An infinite cycle of creation and destruction. Enoch, a righteous and just man of faith. I am forced to rise! In the world of Christianity, subtle differences in doctrine can be profound. While some denominations adhere to a canon of 66 holy scriptures, others embrace 73. Yet beyond these recognized texts, there are religious writings that the Vatican would rather forget. These writings challenge conventional narratives, casting doubt on centuries-old beliefs. Join us on a revelatory journey as we unearth the truths that threaten the foundation of our devotion. Who was Enoch? The Vatican's stance on the Book of Enoch is one of dismissal and disregard. However, could this be because the text contains valuable information that challenges the modern church's beliefs? In 1946, Palestinian teenage shepherds made an astonishing discovery in a remote cave, unearthing clay pots filled with ancient manuscripts. Among these manuscripts was the original Book of Enoch. Enoch, a descendant of Adam and Eve's son Seth, is believed to have lived in the third millennium BC, and according to the book of Genesis, he walked with God for an additional 300 years. Ancient sources suggest that Enoch was no ordinary man during his time on earth. One of the ancient Egyptian chronicles, Kita, claims that Enoch participated in the construction of the Great Pyramids. Furthermore, his name is engraved on the Weld Blundell Prism, an ancient Sumerian artifact listing the names of prominent rulers of the era. Yet the question remains, why did the Vatican hold such disdain for his scripture? The Nephilim, fallen angels or something else? During that era, it was believed that the sons of God were actually fallen angels, also known as the Nephilim. These angels once rebelled against God, choosing to live among humans instead of returning to heaven. In defiance of God's command, their leader Samyaza decided to share secret knowledge with humans, including astronomy, metallurgy, magic, and medicine. Those who mastered this newfound knowledge quickly began oppressing others, and even the Nephilim themselves fell into sin. They formed unions with human women, giving birth to giant children, and the Earth's resources could no longer sustain these giants. This led to tyranny, with some even resorting to cannibalism. Enoch's version of events suggests that God had no choice but to unleash a global flood wiping out these giants and restoring harmony on Earth. The Book of Enoch's Hidden Wisdom The entire Book of Enoch primarily focuses on the Old Testament's prehistory, the period leading up to the Great Flood. Enoch dedicated a significant section of his work to an aspect that is briefly mentioned in the Bible. The Church, however, has never considered the Book of Enoch to be an integral part of the Bible. The Vatican has struggled with it, and some theologians have questioned its credibility. In 1946, young shepherds from Palestine made an astounding discovery in a remote cave, clay pots filled with ancient manuscripts, including the original Book of Enoch. Enoch, a descendant of Adam and Eve's son Seth, supposedly lived in the third millennium BC with an earthly life spanning only 65 years. According to the Book of Genesis, however, he spent another 300 years walking with God. This significant discrepancy raises intriguing questions about Enoch's life and the knowledge he possessed. It challenges the traditional narrative and offers a tantalizing glimpse into the enigmatic character of Enoch. Parallels across cultures. The existence of giants is not exclusive to Greek myths in the Old Testament. Similar stories are found worldwide. For instance, Central African tribes believe they are descended from a giant known as Bamba, whom they revere as a god. In Chinese mythology, Pangu created the world by dividing chaotic forces with a colossal axe, leading to the balance of yin and yang. The stories echo the events described by Enoch regarding the Nephilim and their punishment. Even ancient Greek titans, akin to the Nephilim defied chief god Zeus, were overthrown and imprisoned in the abyss of Tartarus. Giants, too, were a common thread. Is there a direct connection between Enoch's narrative and ancient Greek beliefs? Why does the official Bible scarcely mention prehistoric giants? Could the church be hiding the fact that giants once held more power? Evidence of giant rule. Archaeologists have uncovered fascinating evidence. In one burial site, they found a skeleton measuring over two and a half meters, adorned with copper bracelets on each wrist, 
and a heavy mica necklace on the chest. At least 10 other ordinary sized individuals were buried around this giant. The scene suggested that this giant was a monarch, possibly ruling over other humans. Could it be that thousands of years ago, giants reigned over humanity, as suggested by the Book of Enoch? Enoch's Forbidden Knowledge Despite divine prohibitions, people revered the giants because they were, in part, divine themselves. Some researchers speculate that certain giants may have survived the Great Flood and regained power as rulers. Could the Vatican have been concealing this knowledge for centuries, or does their aversion to the Book of Enoch run even deeper? Enoch's daring claims suggest that the Nephilim might not be fallen angels, but extraterrestrial beings. In his work, Enoch delves into astronomy and celestial mechanics. One chapter, Heavenly Luminaries, provides insights into the movements of the sun and moon, suggesting that Earth is a sphere orbiting the sun. Remarkably, Enoch's descriptions parallel the discoveries made by Copernicus and Galileo in the 16th century. Enoch's calculations for the positions of celestial bodies remain accurate to this day. How did Enoch acquire such knowledge, several millennia ahead of his time? Did he observe Earth from orbit, as his writings suggest? Contradictory realities. Enoch's accounts also mention the treasury of light and thunder, which he equates with ordinary lightning. Yet, from Earth, one cannot observe the formation of lightning. Astronauts aboard space stations, however, witness this phenomenon regularly. Enoch claims that these phenomena are a gift from the Highest of God. He describes visiting the Palace of the Highest, with walls and floors made of mirrored crystal, illuminated by a brilliant yet cold fire. This description curiously resembles modern artificial lighting. Strikingly, the palace could hover in the air, a detail consistent with an ancient Indian epic describing a luminous flying celestial palace known as Vimana. If we compare Enoch's writings with Hindu myths, they seem to describe the same phenomenon. Could Enoch have had encounters with extraterrestrial beings, explaining the Vatican's aversion to his work. In one section, Enoch talks about the, quote, treasury of light and thunder the author's referring to ordinary lightning. But from Earth, it's certainly impossible to see how it is formed. However, astronauts on the orbiting space station have the opportunity to observe this phenomenon every day. Enoch himself claimed that all of this was pulled to him by the highest of God. Once he even had the honor of visiting the palace of the highest. Enoch wrote that the walls and floors there were made of mirrored crystal, and it was illuminated by a light quote, bright as fire but cold as snow. This description bears a striking resemblance to our usual modern artificial lighting. But the most amazing thing is that the palace could float in the air and not travel on it. Interestingly, in an ancient Indian epic, there's an image of Vimana luminous flying celestial palace, which if necessary could become a refuge for various deities if we compare the fragments of the Book of Enoch with Hindu myths. It seems as if they describe the same phenomenon, but Enoch couldn't have been in such a remote part of the world. The whole Book of Enoch might not be a religious text, but a detailed description of an encounter with aliens. Could this be the reason why it was so disliked by the Vatican? Translated Versions and the Extraterrestrial Connection The Book of Enoch was first known in Europe in the 18th century. The text was translated from Hebrew into English by Professor Richard Lawrence, who struggled with certain phrases. Lawrence replaced unclear terms with his own interpretations and omitted passages. Subsequent attempts at translation further muddled the text. In 1984, astrophysicist Fred Hoyle proposed the notion that life might have originated outside of Earth, suggesting a connection between humanity and extraterrestrial civilizations. Why did Enoch refer to the fallen angels as humanoids? Could there be a basis for this description in our DNA, hinting at mixed marriages between human species? This idea is no longer confined to fantasy, but is supported by genetic evidence. Perhaps Enoch was not describing contact with another life form, but encounters with our distant relatives. Both the Vatican and serious historians have dismissed Enoch's accounts as fantasy or deliberate falsification. The Book of Enoch, shrouded in mystery and controversy, challenges traditional religious narratives and presents an alternate view of history. It invites us to consider the existence of giants, the legacy of Enoch's knowledge, and the possibility of extraterrestrial influence. 
While the Vatican and many historians dismiss these ideas, the enigmatic parallels across cultures and the unexplained archaeological findings leave us with tantalizing questions. As we explore the secrets of the Book of Enoch, we're left to wonder, could this ancient text hold the key to unlocking humanity's forgotten past? That's all for today. What are your thoughts on this exploration of the Book of Enoch? If you found this information intriguing, do subscribe and hit the notification bell for future updates. Thanks for watching.